It's the year 2023. The last Grand Slam of the season has ended. Isner just retired. But the match I want to talk about is the recent Wimbledon final, and the player is Federer. Watching the highlights of Alcaraz versus Djokovic, I just cannot stop thinking of the tennis Federer played that have mesmerised even people not caring about sport. But like, it's Wimbledon the last two decades that we're talking about. Before moving on, I have to mention this. Djokovic is the best athlete in tennis, hands down. And this year's final is literally Djokovic versus Spanish Djokovic. The longer into the match, the more I believed I was watching two hard court players struggling on grass. Disclaimer, this video is not to prove any greatest of all time, since tennis viewers would know there can only be greatest of the open era. You may ask, why highlights? Well, these six minutes are plenty, and like the attraction of the name Roger Federer on the centre court scoreboard, the highlights has accumulated four millions more views than the full version. So, the highlights it is. Let's not talk about delayed backswing and acceleration just yet. There are two things associated with Wimbledon, attempts at drop shots and rain. Since Roof was first deployed in 2009 and 2019 on centre court and number one court respectively, matches took place under light rain. Balls bounce low on grass, even lower if it rained the previous day, making movements look sloppy and saving balls near the net. Pointless except for Nadal, but that's for another day. And above the mud rose Federer, literally and figuratively. I repeat, Djokovic is the best athlete in tennis, period. At 1 minute 27 seconds, first frame, Alcaraz initiated the backswing, and Djokovic was breaking while recovering, second and third. A racket quite high, big bounce, cannot confirm how things were from Djokovic's point of view. Fourth frame, very high racket and backswing loop, low hips, 99% chance of a drop shot. Djokovic had yet to change direction. Fifth frame, Alcaraz was about to hit the ball. Djokovic was set to re-accelerate. Sixth and seventh, right after the point of contact, Djokovic figured out and began to rush to the net. The ability to move and maintain that ability are things that not only you need on Monday mornings after weekends out. The 2000s saw one player's dominance, especially at major tournaments and matches approaching the four hour mark. He used to say he did not care if he was down a set or two, and we could see that in every step he made. But that was until the 2012 Australian Open final. Having eliminated gluten from his diet and concentrated on conditioning training, an Eastern European player had transformed from a 20-something who falls to endurance dominator for a whole decade. I repeat, Djokovic is the best athlete in tennis. At 2 minutes 39 seconds, rush to the net, or at 1 minute 40 seconds, even a little late on spotting. The ball's direction, the 20-year-old, with not tennis players' movements but 100-meter runners, with the more energy efficient closer to 4-foot strike, saving great amount of energy, made it in time not only to save the ball, but to make sure it'd be a good return. 3 minutes 31 seconds in, it was the beginning of the fourth set, and the already heavy steps of Nole got even heavier. Five minutes, 10 seconds? Um, this looks more familiar to many. The point starts at four minutes, 54 seconds. The beginning of the fifth set and the fifth hour saw the prominence of Djokovic's rapidly depleting energy. And look at Alcaraz. For F's sake, first set still, huh? Like, ain't nobody can tell me had Djokovic not run out of stamina, he Seattle wouldn't have been able to save the last point. The title goat is up to grab, but Djokovic can definitely pass on the three lungs title. As talking about the one-handed backhand, we talk Federer, we talk Djokovic when talking about two-handed backhands. Let me reiterate, Djokovic is the best athlete in tennis. Low hips, back always stiff or upright, deep down the line, like at 1 minute 10 seconds, 3 minutes 8 seconds, or the 27th second in Cincinnati final highlights. Balls go fast and deep with big bounces, but barely clear the net. On the other hand, it's the Southern European players' forehands that we often talk about. Actively back off the baseline, ideally early unit turn, also carrying the racket. Big back swing loops, wrist turn, fast deep top spin, balls with big bounces. Right-handed, Nadal, right there, at 3 minutes 48 seconds and 4 minutes 47 seconds. Rank climbing gamers would like game cards. Chart climbing singers, newer old acts, would love some payola, own records, bulk shopping, or their signature sounds and writing specially tailored. A five-hour tennis match can be a literal war of endurance and tactics, but a 20 or more consecutive years of 20 to 30 tournaments is a race of money and great strategies. Tennisers have to pay not only fees, but for coaches, physios, traveling, etc. 
Professionals are constantly hired to finesse one's body and racket movements and tactics to tackle particular opponents. Again, Djokovic is the best athlete in tennis. In the 2001 Wimbledon's fourth round, a commentator made a comment about how slow Federer's second serves was. At that particular instance of 91 miles per hour, that number dropped to around 85 in the 2000s. But there was nothing but an increase in efficiency and artistry which put Federer's in serving conversations. And I will come back to this in a sec. However, after six consecutive Grand Slams without an official coach, Federer did hire a coach, the one that changed his games, and a cone, for three and a half year together with the injured period having created six years of the least visually satisfying games of Federer's career. To be fair without this change and adaptation aging endurance wouldn't have let us witness the 2019 Wimbledon final or Grand Slam number 18 to 20. It was not out of the blue either since this collab came as the feel for the growing target backhand wasn't quite there and tennis has seen a lot of this gameplay perfecting through the years. Players physical aspects have been and and probably will be improving as science advances, which is evident in both their physique and agility. We have seen advancements in the consistency of both ball speed and placement, with generations because of not only equipment and court surface improvements, but overall competition. So you better believe that most records will be broken, probably very soon. At the end of the day, the Open Era did not start in the 2000s. Sampras retired after the first winning of three consecutive US Open finals. The Open Era even precedes the ATP, which explains for the missing of the player, the Australian Open's centre court, named after on top of the chart. The nearly 20-year-old Federer caused such a stir eliminating the king of the 90s, Wimbledon Grass, the number one seed, the incumbent champion of seven out of the previous eight tournaments in the fourth round in 2001, ending Pete Sampras's 30-ton match winning streak after a three-hour and 41-minute match that the winner definitely got a bit luckier at the crucial points. The early 2000s also marks the end of the decades-long domination of the US players on the ATP rankings. The 20-year-old Alcaraz, the previous year end and at the time world number one, the youngest in the 50-year history of the ATP rankings, the number one seed played a match of equal levels of and surprisingly similar skills with then defending champion of four consecutive years, ending Nole's winning streak of 34 matches at Wimbledon. I think I can safely say that the agility definitely gave the winner the edge, considering the 4 hour and 43 minute match and nearly 10% extra distance coverage. Stats also say neck and neck, 40 and 45, unforced errors. Respectively, Djokovic with 32 winners, Alcaraz with two folds, plus two. Since COVID-19, there's been zero conversations not mentioning Djokovic. Hitting hard on both court, practicing and on conditioning tracks, or even cutting gluten and dairy out of his diet. Yes, his dedication to this sport is amazing, but it's his mind of steel at the All England Club that makes him such an incredible athlete. Sometimes players forget that they're on court to entertain viewers too. Though sport is noble, it is a noble form of physical art. You win viewers' hearts by spectacular sport and good sportsmanship, not by being disrespectful to people, especially the ones paying hundreds of dollars to spend hours seeing you play one single match, or the ones watch thousands of ads in between shots at home. The only reason these sports are net positive, and you know, we have referees not just to keep the match fair and square, but even more importantly, to keep it going. If it's only about winning, why do we even need the referees there? Just let the players play how they want and decide who won each point. Wait, they're gonna argue a lot? Like they always do, even with the referees there. Maybe we can get rid of the playing too and let them argue for hours instead. That's not how Federer won the oh, viewers' hearts on the 2000s is Arthur Ashe, clearly in favor of the homeboys. That's not counterintuitive, that just plainly doesn't make any sense. Care about the numbers and you watch after the match is done care about the sport, you watch every second of the match. Federer's tennis is like Frank Sinatra's voice, laid back but crisp, like honey, not to the ear, but for the heart. And it's always been the flexible wrist for him, creating satisfying ball curves, not just cross court, but across the net. Short dropping stuff from both players. You've got to be kidding me. What a point. And around the post, Funky That's bumps out of nowhere. Really only oh, plays. Oh, oh, stop it. And Beckhands hitting on the rise since 2017. Balls barely clearing the net. Deep balls outside of the court bent back to the tram line and the baseline. Just to bounce back to the original side again. Making spectators, viewers, commentators and opponents literally scream.
That's an oil painting from Federer. Along with that, it's the consistence of the stance, not so big back wing loop, slowly accelerated for swing, early big unit turn, and the inconsistence of ball's direction and placement, leaving opponents practically no time and clues to predict. A beautiful fake, and uh, they've seen it all before. They have. I don't think Marinko's seen this before, though. Federer shapes up here to hit a drop shot, and at the last minute, he just then changes his Position. Out of natural inertia, not rushing the forswing with steep acceleration curve saves Federer energy, which he'd been lacking compared to younger opponents. The side effects are tempo-breaking shots with magnificent postures and movements to look at. And probably not going to happen, but would we see RFs come back like the way we probably will soon, for the third time, see Kleisters returning and possibly to the top again? Talking about the change, I did mention that Isner is going to make a comeback later on in this video. Here it goes. Prior to the 2010s, Wimbledon did not have a fifth set tiebreak. In 2010, a first round match lasted over 11 hours, spreading out over three days, with 216 aces in total. 70 games Isner's won in the fifth set is more than most tennis matches' total numbers of games. Along the match against Kevin Anderson in 2018 gave the 2019 Wimbledon final. The tiebreak after Federer had missed two consecutive championship points in the 16th game. But you should thank Isner, since with Without the aforementioned matches, the 2019 Wimbledon final might have seen what happened at the 2002 US Open final. Stan felt out of the court now, ball, appealing to line judges, call works. Maybe I should argue with the umpire too. Yeah, right, double bound spotting king. We might not get the chance to watch Federer competing again. I certainly hope we might one day see something like when Rod Laver walking onto the court at the 2017 Australian Open final again. Thank you for watching Thank CC, as well as holding on to the very end. I really appreciate it. Would love to see you again. But for now, be soon. Bye.